One thing that makes me unique, and I think one thing that people appreciate about me universally is that I don't put on an act for anyone. I make all my artwork for myself. I mean, if I don't like the idea, I'm not making the painting. And that's just the way that it is. And a lot of times I've walked away from some pretty promising opportunities because I didn't believe in the vision. I don't put on an act for anyone. I am unapologetically myself. And that's who I am. My guy. He was just knocking on my door, man. My man. My guy. <laughs> What's going on? It's been a minute, man. Welcome to Miami, baby. Thanks for having me. Everything's good. Beautiful home. This is a cool setup, man. I figured we can uh, we can post up here and chill. Yeah, let's do that. When I did my research and I saw JoJo's work, there's a certain type of street, but also contemporary feel about it that I that I gravitated to. We became friends. Uh, we start hanging out. I believe in surrounding yourself around people that are, have positive energy. What do you think about the show, Urban Legends? Oh, it was great, man. That was a good show. Really good show. It's surreal. Having your pieces next to Basquiat and having people like you go in there, check it out. Everyone's taking pictures in front of them. I didn't see this coming. Oh, it was sick. It and was uh, sick. this is the man who put me on over here. I appreciate uh, oh my all God. that. Yeah, man. Uh, at the time, I was missing a, a piece of my collection of something that was biblical, something that meant a lot. I got something in mind that I want JoJo to do for me. And then all of a sudden, boom, I got it. As early as I can remember, the most important thing in my life was the Knicks. You know, playing basketball in the driveway and pretending that you're John Starks with two seconds left to hit a game-winning three-pointer. That was it for me. I mean, that was my release. The way that I grew up, art was never a viable option to really do anything. It was just a hobby for me. I used to doodle and sketch on everything from, you know, notebooks to even my desk in school. Having this infatuation with the Knicks and loving design, you would think to yourself, man, 10, 11, 12 year old Jojo would be pretty impressed with <laughs> who I am now. And, uh, you know, that's a cool feeling. Most of my pieces, if not all of them, start with either old newspapers, old magazines. You could say it's definitely a signature of my art. I usually look for things that you might not see in traditional advertisements today. I mean, when's the last time you've seen an ad for motor oil? I have a deep appreciation for 1960s brand identity logos. I like to see things that take you back to a time where things were more simple. To me, what I create is contemporary pop art and nothing speaks more to that movement than magazines from this era. I think what's important, more than anything, is that these pieces kind of act not just as a static painting, but I want them to be living and breathing on your wall. People have a greater appreciation for them every day that they're hanging there. There's a certain style about it. There's a certain type of street, but also contemporary feel about it that I, that I gravitated to. Each one tells its own unique story. It's new, and the irony behind it is it's anything but new. <laughs> There's a lot of hard work and labor that goes into each and every painting, and each painting is personal for that artist. It's all about your, your drive, your ambition, uh, depending on how he wants to handle it, but the sky can be the limit for him if he continues to work and keep driving. That's a key to, to succeeding in New York City. There's a hustle in the city, there's a grind in the city, and I'm just trying to channel that energy, and that's a lot of what goes into this. As you left New York, you left me with a lot of blessings in New York. 
think the core of my base is a lot of these NBA players who love the culture, the culture of New York, the culture sure. of uh, creativity. They love the R and uh, nice. And uh, it all started with you. Living in New York, I think it's a privilege. I think it's the greatest city in the world. Nobody values time more than the people of New York City. You really need to know what you're doing, you need to know what you're selling, you need to know what you're creating, and you need to get to the point, and you need to get to the point quickly. For people to be able to look at your work, recognize it, enjoy it, love it, and to give you appreciation, and then to make a living off of selling your work in a city with this much cultural history is very different than anywhere else. If you are not standing out and you are not giving it your all, you're gonna get swallowed up and drowned in the mix. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena, most famous arena, most famous arena. Steve from Jackson. Joe, Joe. Johnny. How we doing? What up, brother? Not a bad view, right? Best view in the city. I think so. Thank it's a little different like this, right? It's a lot nicer, yeah. Should we sit? Let's do it, man. It's exciting that you're here. Yeah. Because we're trying to figure out something different that we can put on these walls. And, and we were thinking maybe we could make this wall your canvas. I would like that very much. I think it would be a good fit. And being that we have a lot of crossover and... Uh, One of those things that was a bucket list thing for me was get my work into the garden. There's the, you know, the Matt, and there's the MoMA, and there's the Guggenheim. And I think in many ways, Madison Square Garden serves as its own museum of sorts. When I was like 10, 11, 12 years old, once, if I was lucky, twice a year, I'd get tickets to go to a Knicks game with my dad. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Madison Square Garden, the world and it was like magic to me. And I remember I would mark the days on my calendar. I would say there was going to be 59 more days till I go to see the Knicks game. Here's tonight's starting lineup. The first Knicks game I went to was the Knicks versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. Knicks have won four in a row. They have won six of the last seven. And I remember being in the nosebleed section. And I mean, at the time, I'm not even conscious of where I'm sitting. It's always kind of just a privilege to be there in the presence of the world's most famous arena watching, you know, your favorite team. The feeling that you got when you'd walk in through that tunnel and you would just hit you right when you came in, it was something that you can't replicate. If you asked me back then, what is your favorite thing to do on earth? It was go to a Knicks game. I guess some things never change. Yo. I got your piece ready, by the way. Oh, man, I appreciate it. How's everything? Good, man. When you're younger, you're looking at these people like, you know, they're superstars, they're gods in your eyes, essentially. They're larger than life. And then all of a sudden, you're looking at them not only on a human level, but you're looking at them on a friendship level. It's a surreal experience. It really is. I gotta get ready, all right? All right, go. Here, you can hold on to that. And when's the next time you say you're going back to Israel? When? I forgot. I'm going back to Israel. Uh, in May, early May. So that's the next time we're gonna link up. Now that we're in Florida here, next time we're gonna do it is in uh, Jerusalem, hopefully, right? Yeah, man, that'd be cool. We'll go to the suit and hang out a little bit. That's what I like to do, uh, huh? The is cool. Well, obviously, you know my family heritage. We're from the ancient tribes of Israel, and so we all follow the laws of Moses. At the time, I was missing a, a piece in my collection of something that was biblical, something that meant a lot. If you look at a lot of my art, a lot of my art is, has a lot of vibrant colors, it has a lot of pop imagery, it has a lot of things that speak to a consumer culture. And I think the antithesis to that is the Bible. You commissioned me on the piece. At that time, I'm, I'm only making contemporary work. I, I told you, I was like, you know what, I got this, I got this, I got this. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you right now, when you told me that, I was very beside me. I was scared because I didn't know how I was going to take that project on. And to this day, I think it's my favorite painting that I ever made. Wow. Yeah, this is something with Moses here. As you can see, he's carrying the two tablets, which are uh, the stones of the commandments that were written when he actually descended down from Mount Sinai. He had just had a, had a major encounter with God. He had a certain glow on him where the children of Israel could not look at him no more because he was so bright, like he had a, he was almost transcending into a spiritual being. 
And so when I spoke with Jojo about curating this painting, he did his research and even in the back you see newspaper articles that were written about these people that were saying they were also from the ancient tribes of Israel. And so this painting actually accumulates a lot within one. Being able to sit there and cheer my home team on for a city that kind of embraced me also, and now I have a personal relationship with a lot of these players. Let's go, Tim. Yes, sir. Come on, Tim. You know, you almost put your childhood dreams to shame, in a sense. I wanted to make something that captured the essence of all of that on one canvas. And the first time I was there for Nick's game, I remember, you know, <laughs> scarfing down hot dogs, popcorn, and drinking soda, and it was a magical experience for me. So that's what I want this painting to convey. You have all these different mediums, but once you hit it with the resin, you know that this chapter is closed. It just flattens all those layers onto one surface and tells you a story perfectly once and for all. I mean, what more can I ask for? Being an active artist in New York City, creating things that I love on a day-to-day -day basis, it's the greatest job in the world.